Migos is definitely the best rap group of modern rap. All right. Not the prehistoric. If Offset drops out of Migos, would you take their place? <laughs> Absolutely not. Unfortunately, it seems like there's a little bit of a schism in the Atlanta-based hip-hop trio Migos. Now, first of all, we can't really say that this wasn't without a bit of a lead-up. I mean, Migos have had some issues for a long time. They've had beef with Lil Baby and their label, Quality Control, and with each other from time to time. But what could have possibly led to what's going down? Is it true that Migos is officially over? And what do the members of the group have to say about it? Migos have been around for a long time, despite the fact that they really only started taking off, no pun intended, back in the early to mid 2010s. The guys grew up outside of Atlanta in a northern suburb, raised together. They are all actually blood related. Quavo is Takeoff's uncle and Offset is Quavo's cousin. They stayed on their grind and started making their music and eventually it paid off. They first got big with the single Versace and the track Hannah Montana was infinitely memed, which might have a part to their rise to prominence. Initially, a lot of their songs featured really repetitive hooks, which was a turnoff for many. That being said, Migos were making what they wanted to make and that was party music to throw some bands in the club to. They never really strayed too much from that formula. Migos really, truly rose to fame when they released their first entry in their Culture Trilogy. The lead single from the project, Bad and Bougie, featuring Lil Uzi Vert, still remains one of the most well-known singles in the trap genre. After that, they released the iconic Motorsport, the lead single off of Culture 2, featuring Nicki Minaj, and Offset's significant other, Cardi B. After tons and tons of fan outcry and delays, Culture 3 was finally released in 2021. Fortunately, Culture 3 didn't quite receive the kind of fanfare the previous entries in the trilogy received. It's not that the album was bad or didn't sell well, it just didn't sell the same way the rest did. This is inextricably linked to the beginning of the beef that began to develop between Lil Baby and Migos. While the fellas and Migos weren't really in the depths of the streets throughout their youth, they aren't strangers to crime either. That doesn't really factor into the Lil Baby beef, but it's important to keep in mind. Anyway, the beef between Lil Baby and Migos essentially started when Migos started to feel slighted by the label. To make matters worse, there were rumors going around that Sweetie and Lil Baby were dating. Of course, y'all already know why that's a problem. Quavo and Sweetie had a high-profile relationship. Sweetie claimed that they weren't actually dating, but speculation went wild anyway. There were photos of Sweetie with a mystery guy who was dressed suspiciously like Lil Baby. The Shade Room posted videos and tweets of the guy comparing him to Lil Baby. The caption read, Oh, not social media detectives digging up Lil Baby's Facebook account and finding him in an outfit similar to Sweetie's Mystery Bay. As y'all may recall, Baby recently told us he's single. Thoughts? Roomies? Shade Room? cannot confirm these reports. Then Lil Baby essentially laughed at all an ill-received performance on their track Straightening at the Logan Paul vs. Floyd Mayweather match. The beef pretty much went stagnant from there, and nobody really made any major disses. That being said though, tensions were pretty high for a while. Sweetie later said things would never work out with Lil Baby because you either got time or money. Can't have them both. Do with money, don't have no time. Do with time, don't have no money. We don't have a lot of time around here because time is money. Migos argued that they weren't really getting the same kind of promo that Lil Baby was, despite how big Culture 3 was supposed to be. Not only was it in the last in the trilogy, but it was also one of the most anticipated albums of the year. That being said, it just failed to capture any real hype by the time it actually came around. Migos argued that the label did that on purpose, between the delays and everything else. They think that the label basically decided that Migos were old news and refused to really push Migos the way they deserved. That definitely must have put some major pressure on the group, as did Offset's scandals with Cardi B. Initially, a woman came out to say she was pregnant with Offset's baby. Her name was Selena Powell, and it eventually came out that she was lying to break Offset and Cardi up because she wanted to get with him. However, it came out later that Offset had indeed cheated on Cardi B, or at least tried to. Leaked text messages came out showing that Offset had tried to set up a threesome with Summer Bunny and Cuban Doll. All of these things have been creating problems with the Migos trio, but at the same time, there's no smoking gun to say whether or not they will really break up. A lot of people think an official announcement is imminent. See, the biggest thing here is that Takeoff and Quavo are working as a duo now, even releasing a music video for a new single called Hotel Lobby. There's also the fact that there's been a whole big round of random unfollowings. Offset unfollowed Quavo and Takeoff, Quavo unfollowed Cardi B and Offset, while Takeoff is keeping things mostly neutral and is still following both of them. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're breaking up, maybe there's just some kind of internal falling out and they're actually going to stick together, but things are just coming together in such a perfect way that there's really no reason to know. In addition to the music of Takeoff and Quavo's project known as Unconfew, Offset had his own solo music. Despite multiple possible divorces or separations between Offset and Cardi B, he also has the ability to 
to do a collaboration with her, and it's likely that the album would garner a whole lot of hype. Some paparazzi recently caught up with Quavo at LAX to ask him about the whole situation, hoping Quavo would be willing to either confirm or deny and put the rumors to rest. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. No, I got a lot of people concerned the band's breaking up, right? Anything you can say? Uh... No. Now the thing, are, look, are things okay? Are you things okay with you and you and Offset? At this point, a lot of people are speculating that this is either all just a big stunt to promote Unk and Few, or just some normal family drama that's going to blow over pretty much any day now. It's pretty hard to say what's actually going on here, but both of those theories make sense. At the same time, a lot of people have pointed out that Migos has to come to a close at some point. I mean, they've been going strong for almost a decade and a half now. Maybe it's time that they move on to new things. For Takeoff and Quavo, it looks like that's Unk and Few. For Offset, that must be a solo stuff. But that leaves one question unanswered. This seems like either an issue that Quavo has with Offset or the other way around. What we really need is a statement from Offset. At the moment, the fact that he doesn't have time or need to speak on the whole thing almost feels like he just doesn't care about the whole thing. Maybe that speaks more about the situation than anything Offset ever could have had to say. Tons of people on Twitter are waiting for the announcement that Migos has officially broken up. It seems that most people think that this thing's pretty final and that it could be the end of the group. One fan said, I ain't gonna believe this Migo breakup is legit at least like three years. Then family, they're gonna be all right. Another fan once again tried to tie the whole thing back to the beef with Lil Baby and made a pretty good point saying, one of the Migos didn't really break up, it's publicity. Second, the Migos absolutely hate Lil Baby and it's a clout move. They do bring up a good point though. This is a huge clout and not only that, but if you can build hype for two new projects, why not? Recently, label mate Lil Yachty spoke on the situation with DJ Academics and at least as far as he'll say, he's really not sure what's up. He pulls the whole, just to watch it, watch it. Mm -hmm. However, he might be telling the truth. He might actually not know anything about the situation, because when academics ask when the last time he saw them together at the studio was, Little Yachty says he hadn't seen them separately at the studio for a long time. On the other hand, it's weird, because at least according to academics, Offset confirmed to him that the whole thing is capped, and it's purely happening to promote his new music and hotel lobby. Offset has indeed been releasing stuff, so that would kind of check out. DJ Academics also think that Migos is too huge to break up like that. He essentially thinks that they're doing this now to help out their solo careers, although the group itself isn't actually done for. Specifically, Academics said, they might be going through a small disagreement or whatever. I think that they're angling it because, you know, Takeoff and Quavo just put out a song, so they're kind of letting it lie, letting the questions linger or something like that. But at the end of the day, they're family. Offset confirmed that to me too. Maybe if it was the city girls that unfollowed each other, but the Migos? Come on. I just can't see a gangster group like the only sign of trouble is them hitting unfollow. What do y'all think about all this though? Have Migos actually met their end or will the whole thing get sorted out soon? Is it possible that the different groupings of the members of Migos will have a successful career after the whole thing falls apart? Let us know what you think down below in the comments and don't forget to keep it rizzle. Oh, and you should definitely peep this next one if you dug what you saw here.